Good morning, everyone. Sam here. Let's get started. Great to see everybody. Great to be with you. And uh, let's dive in. So today I will, uh, we won't have, Good we'll morning, go into Sam here. one second. Let's get started. Great to see there we go. Sorry about that. I had a little, uh, uh, forgot to check a box. Now we're good. Okay. Here's our thought of the day. Um, a bird sitting on a tree is not afraid of the branch breaking because her trust is not in the branch, but in her own wings. And that's really the goal with everything we do is to empower you to understand how the markets really work and uh, identify significant supply and demand levels, imbalances, right? As we know, the movement of price in any and all markets is simply a function of an ongoing supply and demand equation. Opportunity exists when that simple and straightforward equation is out of balance. We apply these, these rules and the strategy for day trading, swing trading, longer term position trading, investing, whatever you want to call it. And uh, any market, stocks, futures, forex, options, real estate, cryptocurrency, bonds, you name it. Let's move on. So I uh, promised you we would go over this session guide and we're going to do this for two reasons. The most important reason is to learn the difference between levels that you see on a price chart, right? No different than, um, well, let's dive in, okay? So ideally on a price chart, the, the price chart would do this for you. But uh, um, now we have an automated supply and demand tool. Um, I'll probably share that with you tomorrow. But your average platform obviously doesn't distinguish between different supply and demand zones, right? And that's if you can even identify a supply and demand zone in the first place, right? Not everybody can yet. So let's take a look. So these these, these um, different codes, these kind of different color codes are what you see on the charts that Jasmine and I share with you. So one of the things we've gone over this week, if you remember, is uh, we had one little kind of lesson session where we answered the question, uh, why do some levels work and others don't? And remember, the answer had a lot to do with, more to do with location than structure. Remember that? Okay, much more to do with location than structure. And um, so let me just, let me kind of dive in here and I'll, I'll, you know, you'll see what I mean. Um, what I'm getting at is how many times have you seen two levels that look identical? And I mean literally look identical, right? Uh, same number of candles, same everything. And uh, one works great. And the other one doesn't work at all. Okay. Why is that? It's normally because of location. So that's the that's the reason for kind of color coding the things you see here. Now we'll explain all that to you, but the colors help you understand it. The first one up there, that one's pretty simple. A quality, fresh supplier demand zone. There it is. It's going to be a yellow box, period. That means it meets the criteria for structure and location and it's fresh, meaning it's had no pullbacks. Does that make sense? Again, that, that first one up there in the left corner, yellow box means it's met the criteria for structure and location and, uh, and there's no pullbacks. That's what the word fresh is for. Let's skip down to the blue one on the bottom and um, all, what the blue one is, is it's a level that's possibly developing. Typically that level, if it does develop, will become a yellow box. Almost always if that, again, if that blue circled level 
actually becomes a level, it will almost always become a yellow box, right? But we identify these things in advance two ways. Number one, if we see price, you know, uh, basing and maybe starting to move out of an area, but it hasn't moved out enough, maybe it's a potential demand zone and it hasn't cleared out the near-term supply, which, which would offer us the profit zone that we need for the ideal opportunity. Maybe it hasn't done that yet, but it's kind of starting to do that. We'll put that on to keep an eye on it, right? The other thing, and I don't want to confuse anybody here, but um, for those that have been doing this for, for a while, have you noticed that um, you, you can, you know, we see where levels are, right? The levels that are on the charts, but, but when you, um, but you can also become fairly good at identifying where the next level is likely to be. And I'll try to point that out during today's session a little bit, meaning if you have a supply zone, for example, that's already had two pullbacks to it, fairly, fairly deep, right? Meaning a lot of that uh, supply has been absorbed. We would anticipate that the next time price comes back to that level, it probably won't drop. It'll probably base sideways while the rest of those orders get filled. And then it'll move higher, leaving us the footprint of a new quality fresh demand zone where banks and financial institutions are buying, right? What was supply then flips to become demand. So, right, so we can, we can do a pretty good job anticipating where new levels are likely to develop. Okay, remember every every quality zone or level is there because of another one's existence. And we have a whole kind of, you know, lesson on that. But anyway, so that's what the blue means. Now let's go to the middle here. The yellow circle represents an overnight level. Now why is that important? Because um, in the equity index markets, and I would say the, the bond markets, and a, a few others, um, well, let me say it this way. We're not really talking about the forex markets when we look at when we consider overnight levels, right? The, the forex markets are probably the truest markets to when it comes to 24 hour um, activity and importance. Now there are quality times to to focus on levels in the forex markets and other times that are not. Jasmine can go over that with you in a little bit, but um, but for overnight here, we're mainly talking about equity index markets. So a few things there, a level created in the overnight session, maybe um, especially on the supply side, right? We wanna be very careful with those. In fact, most people, it's probably a good idea not even to take those, right? If you have a trading plan, you know, it's not a bad idea to say, you know what? Overnight uh, supply zones in the equity index markets, not interested in that. Okay. Remember, equity index markets are designed to go up over time. We've been over that, you know, many times on, on why that is. So be careful with overnight supply zones in the equity index markets. Um, now, uh, e even on the demand side, you know, a level produced during the day session is typically going to be, you know, higher probability than uh, a level, a demand zone created in the overnight session. Okay doesn't mean that trades taken in the overnight session are lower probability or higher risk or lower reward. In fact, one of the highest probability trades we can find and take is typically the overnight entry into a day session level. Does everybody understand that? And Right, an overnight entry into a day session level. Think about it. You have that overnight kind of volume going into a level, or let me say it this way, overnight participation going of, of price maybe moving down into a demand zone with that, uh, with the, the buying potential in that demand zone, right? That the demand from a day session participation. Does that make sense? That's one of the highest probability opportunities we can find. Yeah, so um, so that's why the overnight level is typically lower probability, okay? The white circle just simply means it's retested. So obviously that's going to be a lower probability opportunity. However, if price just touches the level and takes off, 
it's not that much lower. It's not that, you know, much lower uh, when it comes to probability. Think about it. Inside of each zone, say a demand zone or supply zone, there are multiple price points inside those zones. So each price point represents a different amount of willing demand or willing supply. So let's say a demand zone is five points from top to bottom. Well, and, and prices only went one point into that level on the first pullback. Well, the other four price points, not one of those, not one buy order in those four price points has been filled yet. Does that make sense? So it's not necessarily that low of uh, probability. And, and often what happens is that first pullback, right? You get a first pullback into a demand zone, maybe it just touches the level and moves higher. That initial move higher that maybe, you know, maybe you missed it, but that initial move higher does it, you know, helps open up that initial profit zone because it's filling the sell orders above. So that that next move down into the level is, you know, creates the bigger move up. Does that make sense? A lot of times that second pullback is really strong. Um, all right. Over on the right, here's a gray level and a brown level. Okay. And again, I, I hope you don't, you know, you, we don't want you to look at this and say, okay, this is complicated. There's all these different levels. This is to, this is to help make sense of all the different, all, all the levels that you see on a chart. You know, to me, this helps answer the, the questions that we get the most over the years, right? Which level? I've got a bunch of levels here. Which is the one I should take? Uh, why do some levels work and others don't? Um, the the level uh, levels I take don't work, but then I see all these other levels work out. How can I tell the difference? You follow me? Those are all the questions and challenges that people have. This is meant to put some, uh, you know, put some context around those. Th those. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, Dennis, I love that. A probability gauge. That's exactly what this is, right? And as we know, with probability, typically comes. Uh, profit zone, profit zone and probability typically go hand in hand, right? Not a hundred percent, but they do. So that's, that's what this is uh, meant to do. Not to say, all right, we just comp or complicating the sessions. No, it's the opposite. We're going to help you make sense of the sessions. And what you can, this is like a menu, right? You got me thinking now, Dennis, uh, that's Dennis Whitworth. He knows his stuff as, as well as anybody. Um, right. So, this is meant to be a menu. Well, that is, this is a menu. It's like, okay, you know, what do you want? Do you want the, the high probability stuff and, and less trading? Do you want the lower probability stuff and more trading opportunities? You know, what are you looking for? Okay. Or, or, or what do you want? So um, everybody's a little bit different. Okay. The, the, the gray one, yeah, good idea, Dennis. And that's what I love about, you know, uh, you know, that's uh, some of the enjoyment I get out of all this is is just, you know, creating and building, sharing it with you, and then you help you help take it to the next level. And that's how this has always been, which is uh, fantastic. So, and now you got me thinking that the uh, the charts on the right, we should probably put bigger diagrams to this to make it even more clear. But let's go over this gray one in the upper right corner. So when you see a gray box, this level worked and price is simply moving to profit target. That's it. And you can see the example up there. Okay. So it doesn't mean that we necessarily would take that level again. We, in many cases, we probably wouldn't, but let's say, you know, for example, the, um, you know, we're in a, there, there's a trade that met entry, I don't know, let's say two weeks ago and it's moving to target. We're still going to go over it in these sessions because many of you might be you know, many of you might be uh, in that, right? So maybe, maybe, you, maybe some of you are in a trade that we put out there two weeks ago. Well, we're going to keep going over it as it moves to target to make sure you understand. You know, did a new demand zone form? Did a new opposing supply zone form? Nothing that would necessarily make you abandon your plan, but just just to keep you informed, help to help remind you that hey, price is eighty percent to your profit target. This is where you, you may want to think about taking profits, right? But someone coming new to this, coming in new to the session, for example, that wasn't around two weeks ago might look at that and say, well, wait, why is that level still in, 
Well, it's not there because we would take it again, but we're following a trade from start beginning to completion. Okay. All right. So, so again, make sure you're clear. This gray box is not the same as the white circle. The white circle is a retested level that we're saying odds are this is a good one to take again. The gray box, that's not what we're saying. We're just following this one to target to help to make sure everybody's clear. Um, and last but not least, this one's important, the brown box. Okay, the brown box. So this is a level that's inside a range. Okay, so um, here's, for example, the th this level up here that I'm pointing to, let's assume that was a uh, yellow box at one point. Fresh quality supply zone, right, in the right location. Price comes up to that level, starts to fall, and then as it's falling, a new supply zone develops here, maybe on a smaller time frame. Okay, so that can certainly still be a good level, but it's going to be lower probability than the one that's in the, the really ideal location. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, Nasser, I'm not in, I'm not in love with the brown either. Um, the more I look at it here, it's yeah. So maybe we'll go with another color there. But the main point, you're right. But the main point is that's now a level that's, you know, it's inside the range. It's still, it's very close to a good, you know, to being a good location. Meaning, you know, if you remember our, our red and green uh, little stick figures, it's definitely close to the red, maybe a touch inside the white space. So still a level that's probably pretty good, but probability wise, it's not as good as this original supply zone simply because of the, you know, the amount of supply there. And that's what the chart is suggesting. Make sense? Okay. Don't want to spend too much time on that. But, uh, but hopefully this starts to make sense of, you know, you look at your charts, it's like, okay, I've got like four supply zones here and three demand zones there. Well, of course, right? It, at, you know, you look at enough time frames. there's supply and demand zones all over the place. That's, that's what the market is. It's just buyers and sellers, right? Supply and demand. So we need to make sense of it so we can have this razor sharp focus based on a simple set of rules of where are banks and financial institutions buying and where are they selling? That's it. Okay. Some, some quick thoughts for, uh, that, that may help. Um, set and forget trading is, is, is pretty important, right? For, for the main reason there is to eliminate emotion. Okay. Um, as we know, you know, some, you know, I, I would argue that the rules for what we do are very simple, right? But the act of executing this is not easy, right? Because most people are conditioned to buy when things are good in a market and sell when things are bad in a market. That's not how this works. When you're buying at demand, prices always come down and it's usually come down be for a, a reason that is not good. It's bad, right? So um, typically the more you can set and forget your trading or investing and investing, right? All that um, trading of any sort, typically the better you're going to do, right? How many times have you, uh, let me ask this way. If you look back at all of the trades that you've put out there or planned, uh, let's say that, right? All the trades that you've planned out there, and maybe you've taken them, maybe you haven't, maybe you've taken them and not followed your rules, what have you, whatever you've done. If you could go back and all the trades that you've ever planned out, just, and you and you took them exactly according to plan, meaning complete set and forget, my guess is you would have done uh, much better than you did. It's just a guess, but I bet I'm right. Make sure you understand the risk and you're comfortable with it. That's a big one. Okay. Make sure you understand the risk. There's almost there's almost nothing more important than that. Okay. Because, and this one speaks back to point number one. One of the main reasons that you would abandon your plan is because you're not comfortable with the risk that you're taking on. So make sure you understand what that risk is and then you're, you're perfectly okay with it. Okay. Um, obviously, like anything in life, you want to keep it simple. Um, just about anything that works in life, the way that it works is, is, is fairly simple. You don't have to overcomplicate things. And try not to second guess yourself. Okay. 
All right, let's move on. Let's keep moving. There it is. There's the nifty. Now, um, it may not mean anything to you and seem silly, but I spent quite a bit of time finding a chart that was presentable. Um, I don't have the, uh, I know there's a, a lot of people from India with us here today, and I don't have a, uh, I don't have the ShareCon platform. Um, I used to, but anyway, found a chart of the nifty, looked through a few time frames. Uh, the daily chart, obviously, if you're looking at that, doesn't, this is the nifty. So this is the, uh, this is like the S&P of India. It's called the nifty 50, right? And um, there's some big, big stocks. I almost, I almost put uh, bank nifty up to up here, but we ran out of time. But um, this is, this is the big Indian stock market. And for, for people in India, this is the main focus. And uh, people in India, they don't, they, they can't really, the rules are such that they can't really trade markets outside of India and they're not supposed to. So there's some exceptions there, but not much. Um, anyway, I thought the four hour chart here of the nifty, and we can go over this, you know, uh, another time as well to maybe a special session. Um, but uh, I thought the four hour chart kind of said it all here, right? So nifty has been in a range and there are other levels on smaller time frames inside of the range that I'm showing you here, but nothing great. And back to our location concept, right? Back to our location concept. We don't really want to look for demand zones above this, above this area here, right? So the bottom of this entire range is right here. So price, that means price should not have a hard time falling through this range if there's any reason for price to fall, right? Anything happens that drives, that brings in kind of some, some negative perception because um, we've been down here already. However, the demand zone, the footprint of big institutional smart money buying is down here just below 8,000. We've had no, uh, no revisits to this level, okay? So there's the fresh quality demand zone below that range. And then, of course, uh, sitting just above, you know, this 9,500 area, we might think, well, we can look for supply just above this. But if there was so much supply above this, how did this, how did price trade up here for a full day? The answer is it wouldn't have. And in fact, it couldn't have if there's so much supply below this price. All right. Next, we look left and... Yes, we can look inside here, but the, uh, the the proper thing to do if we're following our rules is to look above this pivot. And when we do that, we come to our fresh supply zone sitting right up here. So those of you uh, are, are friends from India here, you might want to take a look at your four-hour chart of Nifty, and uh, and there's your there's your zones. Okay, again, there are levels here on a uh, little bit smaller time frames, but if you want to stick to high probability. This is what you would look for. All right. Moving on to today, let's dive in. So one of the one of the uh, um, things to focus on today, if we look at the chart on the left, so this is a four-hour chart of the NASDAQ. Okay, overall, the equity index markets are nearing. We've been talking all week, you know, the, the equity index markets are, are getting closer to supply, right? Every day has been a little bit closer. Yesterday, uh, a couple of them actually barely touched those supply zones we've been going over. Okay, and um, uh, but, but uh, not all of them, right? So the Russell touched, and we'll look at others in a few minutes. The NASDAQ did not. But uh, here's a chart of the NASDAQ, four-hour chart. So we can see the NASDAQ does have a couple supply zones like the others that are sitting just above current price. And uh, for those of you that have been in my sessions for, you know, for weeks or months now, um, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, um, we had a demand zone where people were able to buy at if they wanted to. And the, the plan there was um, the profit zone was such that we expected price to move from this demand zone up to these supply zones, right? So we're going to look in a few minutes at the live charts. You're going to see on smaller time frames there are some demand zones that are not too far below current price. But I wanted to, if you, if you, if you could, you know, see the context in a bigger picture chart here, you could see it's probably not smart to be looking for, you know, demand zones close to current price. Is that is that pretty clear to everyone looking at this four-hour chart? Okay. 
Does that make sense? So make sure you focus on this for context. Again, there are there's a demand zone in the S and P and Nasdaq that's not far below current price. I think it's on like I think they're on like ten minutes chart charts. We'll look in a few minutes, but um, but they're they're right up here. So they can work, right? They can they can work. They're just not high probability. So why why risk money on that? Now some of you may want to, and that's fine if you're okay with a lower probability setup. It all depends on you know what you want off that menu. All right, and then um, and for those that may still be long from uh, our demand zone here, again, just want to make you aware that we are fairly close to the supply. So um, our profit rules. Some of you may not have may not have been in those sessions, but our profit rules are such that we're typically looking for something like eighty to ninety percent of the available profit zone is our mechanical place to you know uh, rule based way to to uh, for profit taking. That's all. Okay. All right, let's keep going. So if you look at the chart on the right, uh, look at the 10-year. And uh, the point here is for our chart of the 10-year note, so bonds are one of the inverse markets uh, to the equity index markets. It doesn't mean that it's always an inverse market. Make sure you understand that. A lot of people think stocks and bonds are always moving in the opposite direction. That's not true. Okay. When we want to focus on those is when they're both hitting opposing supply and demand levels at the same time. So uh, the bonds do have supply sitting just above. Now, uh, one scenario is if the bonds come up to supply, now they would have to rally to get there, which would push that Russell and others equity index markets down. So, but if the um, if the bonds rally to get there and then turn lower, that would help push stocks higher, right? Okay. And that's one scenario here for this NASDAQ that may bring the NASDAQ up to supply. So we'll watch for that. Having said all that, this supply zone, while it's near the upper end of this range, again, we've been here multiple times. So uh, this is not uh, this is not your highest probability supply zone because of that. All right. Let's, uh, let's keep going. In fact, why don't we just go to the Let's just go to live charts. There you go. There is, uh, here are our uh, trade station charts, right? Let's start with the S&P. And to continue along the theme that uh, I've just been sharing with you, I think we're going to go to the 60-minute chart. Okay. So here's the um, again. So the S and P and these are these are levels that we've been you know sharing in our sessions for a while now. So the S and P has moved from our uh, 2756 demand, and here is the supply that we've been sharing with you, starting around 30. It's actually like 3005 up here, right? So we're still you know 50, 60 points away from from uh, these levels, but there's two levels sitting on top of each other here in the S and P, and obviously they're just a, a little bit higher, right? So there's room. There's room. Now, pay, pay close attention to this recent drop just the other day. Uh, actually, just was that yesterday, the last 24, 48 hours. Um, this recent drop down to 29.08. Right? So because of that, because price was able to go down to 29.08, it's probably not a smart idea to look for demand zones inside here. Right? Now, having said that, Let's go down to, for example, like our 10-minute chart. Um, let's actually go down to this chart right here. Um, and let me make this a 10-minute chart. There we go. So here's that look, here's that move down to 2908. So probably not a great smart idea to look inside here. You know, do we have things that represent demand down here? Yeah, there's maybe a level here and a, a thing in here. You know, this little area here possibly. But again, why look inside here when you know larger time frame supply is just a little bit higher, and price was able to go you know down to 2908 over the past couple of days. So again, to keep it high probability, you wouldn't want to look inside there. Does that make sense? Okay. 
And then the next area we would even, you know, possibly think about looking would be down here on the smaller time frames. Now that's not to say something new can't develop. That can happen. Okay. Something new can develop. All right. Um, okay. Let's keep going. Before I move uh, to the NASDAQ, let's take a quick stop at the spiders. Okay. okay. So when we look at the spiders, we're going to focus again on the, uh, I believe it's a 60 minute chart for supply. So uh, let me just be clear. Let me go back to the S&P for a moment. Look at the 60 minute chart. I'm going to scroll back and I'm going to actually, let's open this up a little bit. See these two levels on top of each other here? Starting at around 30, uh, 3002, right? Kind of the meat of that is up closer to about uh, 10, right? It's really about 30, 3010 is where the meat of that starts. See these two levels on top of each other? I'm going to show you where those two areas are on the spiders. Okay, so it's going to look like a big area on the spiders, but it's really two. There it is. Okay, so really starting just above. And I would say the meat of that, if you want to cut it down, so the, those two levels are on top of each other in here. This isn't just one giant level. There's actually two levels in there. And the upper one really starts around 303.50. That would be right up in here. So 303.50. Okay, in fact, I'll move that up for you here. That's uh, right there is where that really that second one begins. And that's the higher probability area. So the spiders are getting somewhat close to that. And then, whoops, and then we'll go to the 30-minute chart. We can see around 280 is where the, the quality high probability demand is likely to be. All right. Okay, let's keep going. So let's move over to the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ, where we focused on the 60-minute chart in the S&P, we're going to focus on the four-hour chart in the NASDAQ. Uh, looks like the NASDAQ just hit our little 30-minute level here. Um, we'll come back to that in a, in a minute. So those same two quality areas in the NASDAQ really start up around 95.50. So a little less than 100 points from where we're at now. And there's really two levels on top of each other there. One's a, one's a day session level, one's an overnight session level. And that's from our a move up from our demand zone at 88.79. So if you've been with me in, in, in the morning sessions for a while, just be aware that we're definitely within that profit target range, uh, you know, following the rules that we cover. All right, if you're long from that level down there. Having said all that, the NASDAQ did just reach a supply zone that Jasmine's been going over with you. There it is. That's the 9501.50 up to 95.35. That's this area right here. So we just hit that, um, was it, uh, you know, yesterday afternoon, right? Came up there, just touched the level and fell, but there it is. Also keep in mind, we're talking about supply zones in the equity index markets. And uh, so these are markets that are designed to go up over time. Again, just make sure you're uh, very much aware of that. Okay. And then again, we've got these, you know, demand zones down here, but... They're, they're so close to larger time frame supply, it's probably a best I, better idea to go, you know, below. Uh, so for that, that area, that range, you know, location-wise. Moving on, let's take a look at the Russell. So here's that 60-minute level we've been talking about. Anybody, um, anybody take this trade yesterday, either in the Russell Futures or IWM, the ETF? maybe an options position, just barely touched the level that uh, Jasmine's been going over with you, the 1355 to 1363. Obviously, we've come down to this area of demand and are now bouncing up from it. Okay. We do have another little pocket of supply here that's uh, that should probably cause a problem for the rally. But uh, again, that was created in the overnight session, I believe. Uh, well, not all of it was, but some of it was, so may not be too big of a problem. All right. All right, let's keep going. 
Want to bring your attention to the daily chart of the Russell. Don't forget, uh, it is quite a bit higher, but it's important to remember you know, that we do have supply on the daily chart, uh, uh, looking at the daily of the Russell, starting up around 1473. So that's where your big significant levels are. <clears throat> right, okay. And then um, let's go to the, and, and you know, along the line, along the lines of that, that Russell supply, don't forget we've got the neat guy supply up here, right? So we've been pointing this out for a couple days. We looked at it yesterday or the day before. Yesterday we touched it. You know, now we're falling from it a little bit. Um, but with the strength in the other equity index markets, it should keep prices up here. But going deep or through this level anytime soon is is not likely. And then some more context just before we go to the uh, the Dow. Here's that DAX supply as well. Okay, eleven seven thirty one. Just some just some context, so we have a solid understanding of where that that whole global supply and demand relationship in the equity index markets. Okay. All right. So um, let's see here. I want to focus on. I want to focus here for a moment. So these are two overnight demand zones in the equity index markets. And uh, all I want to point out here is how far current price is away from those areas. So what you want to have here is in mind is that where that Russell supply is, probably more importantly, where that NASDAQ and S&P supply is. And, um, and then just, you know, understand the distance between that and where some demand zones are below. And that's important. Okay. All right. Um, so, oh, let me go back to the Russell. Just want to make one more quick point here. Let's go to our 60-minute chart. Let's go back to the 60-minute. Now, when I scrunch this up, okay, so here's that 60-minute here's that, minute that um, uh, that we were just going over, right? That's that level that hit yesterday for us. Um, notice, notice the big range in here. Does everybody see that? Everybody see this big range I'm pointing to? And of course, uh, this big demand zone over here. But more importantly, focus on the range. Price has been through this area once, twice, three times, four times. Now, when you look below, and you, you might look at this thing right here, this little demand zone, and say, wow, does that look great? Look at that perfect structure level. Well, it's inside this range, and we've been through here four times. Uh, you know, not high probability. And that's one of the biggest differences. That's why I, I spent almost 30 minutes on location the other day. So one of the things you want to uh, focus on. And with that, I think I will uh, leave you with that and turn it over to Jasmine. She'll walk you through um, all the other markets we have for you. And the purpose of these sessions, again, is to help you understand the strategy and uh, and walk you through just the major global markets around the world. Not necessarily to focus specifically on stocks or futures or Forex or any of that, but more to just have a nice global understanding of the, the global supply and demand picture going into each day. And when I say that, that's not specific to day trading. It's where are we now, where are prices likely to turn, and where are prices, prices likely to go. Uh, all right, Jasmine, it's all yours, and uh, great to see everybody. So, a lot. But before I turn it over to Jasmine, there's a lot of people who have questions about the new venture and some of the tools and all that. So, um, we'll we'll spend a little bit. Uh, we'll make sure we spend a little time on that uh, tomorrow. Okay. All right. Have a great day, everybody. And um, again, if you came a little late to the session, the session is is um, uh, the session is recorded. But uh, there's our thought of the day. So with that in mind, let me turn it over to Jasmine here. It's all yours, Jasmine. All right. Thanks, Sam. Hi, everyone. Always great to hear Sam, the originator of supply and demand. He explains it better than anybody else. So those of you that 
have issues, problems, uh, you guys got to keep listening. Repetition, 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 always gaining some nuggets along the way. Just get yourself better and better and better at it. And that's how it works. That's with anything. All right. So uh, Sam just brought up uh, a bit about the Nikkei, and I wanted to talk about it a little bit. You can see here on the daily where we have been showing you where uh, we are starting to hit. Uh, we are a little bit bottled up at the current moment with uh, possibly a little bit of a breaking out of the top. So you can see, but you can see where we're coming right into. That's why it's uh, drawn as a little bit of a circle right now. But at the current moment, you can see two on the 240. Also, uh, forming this little area here. So a little bit of a fight going on in between at the at this uh, you know nice uptrend move, but then we're hitting up into that daily, and then of course there's also a fresh uh, level up at the uh, twenty two one one two and twenty two five four eight. Uh, a part of all this now, if you remember when the whole episode started with the uh, the virus. Uh, and and Sam had pointed out how uh, how the uh, Nikkei and the uh, Asian markets, you know, those are the first ones to be affected because they went into lockdown first. Now, with all of this subsiding, um, you'll see that we have continued issues going on and escalating a little bit more between the two presidents. Uh, overall, it doesn't look like it's gonna it's going to go away anytime soon. So I think it's still important knowing that we are getting up to these levels inside of the Nikkei and to pay attention uh, to uh, the overall uh, news. If this is the market that's going to show us at the moment, you can see it's still remaining very strong. But if things start to escalate a little bit more, uh, perhaps this is the first market that's going to also show you weakness too. So pay attention to uh what what is going on with it at the moment uh right now we still do have some uh, uh 60 minutes of man below this previous low coming in at uh 20 33 50, uh, 35 and 20 uh 267 and like i said uh, we'll keep a watch on this area here starting to form a little bit of base uh near the uh daily The other uh, market too, they, like I mentioned yesterday with the stimulus, so also adding some strength to this market. Now, all of them look the same. You can see here, just like the rest of the equity markets, they um, a little bit different. They they have been weak because in general, uh, you know, Europe's been having trouble with just the uh, between all of the issues uh, with the virus and just having economic trouble in general. But now with the uh, stimulus is, is driving a lot of um, the move at the current moment, but they are still well below. So they're still showing more strength. There is a little bit of an area, right? As it's hitting now from the overnight. So this is an overnight in, inside of the range. Uh, you can see right here at the 11,138 to 11,740. Uh, down below. So these are all uh, brown for uh, a reason. But you can see the first area here, the 10,763 to 10,722. These are all, we, um, yeah, I noticed uh, it's a, it is a little bit too dark. So we'll try to find the right shade for that. But uh, overall, it's because it is inside of this uh, area here, right? So the fresher levels is still going to come up above um, on your 240, uh, just a little bit uh, higher up. So these two markets, uh, just to pay attention to, because you you may see start to see some weakness inside of um, the uh, Asian markets, but then uh, having some um, strength inside of the European markets. However, eventually, if things start to fall apart, they'll have to uh, move together. And a lot of times what, why the U.S. equities still continue to move higher is just because, uh, you know, who, where, who's worse, the worst, um, the better of all the uh, evils. So it's like the U.S. markets is still the, the one that people flock to. So. All right. Uh, so with that being said, let's move on to uh, the bonds. Okay. 
Yeah, I, the levels you feel comfortable with, you should definitely, yes, uh, definitely set the, the set forget. And as long as you know, you know, with most of these, you just got to know your risks. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to to sleep at night. And a lot of you probably takes you quite some time to be comfortable with that. You know, you definitely are not going to do it in the beginning, even though some of you, believe me, uh, that are very robotic, uh, mechanical, which is what you should be. Uh, you do it from the very beginning and then you never have that bad habit of not doing it. The issue a lot of times is, you know, you start out the reverse way. So you're trying to change uh, a, a habit of continuing to, you know, monitor it every every candle, every minute, you know, every second. Uh, that's what usually causes a lot of issues because you're monitoring it, um, you know, very, very tightly. But, uh, you know, others of you that, you know, just start out right, right, outright learning, uh, you don't have an issue with that at all. So the good and the bad about this, um, if we take a look at the tenure, what we're seeing that we're very, very, very range bound, very, 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 very bottled up um, at the top very strong move up. You know, this is all, all, all around the world. We are suggesting globally negative interest rates, right? Not, not, not what the uh, overall um, Fed wants, but it, that is what is suggesting uh, basically all around the world. So you can see that we are headed up towards back to the highs again. We do have this area here that can act as a little bit of a hole but remember too uh we've been here you know if you take a look on the daily numerous times too so as we continue to push up back to uh, the uh, supply zone we did create a couple of demand zones that we have continued to move up now we have another little demand zone that's inside of this overall uh range too as well that's the 138.30 to 138.28 eight. So the one thing where we're looking for this is if we do push up in here, we could get an equity move up a little bit higher. And then as we uh, come out and uh, hit a little bit of demand again, which is still uh, fairly close, then, then uh, that should also, um, uh, you know, uh, bring equities down a little bit. So once it hits demand, equity should go down, hit supply, equity should go up. So that's uh, that's a scenario that uh, could happen well, within this tight little range that we're having at the current moment. But the bonds can get very slow. So just so you know that, um, you know, you're you're looking to use it as an inverse. And then there's certain days where they barely move. And and so it may look like it's very close and then it doesn't get there. Other days, you know, it gets there pretty quickly. So uh, just be careful on using it too, too much. Uh, for a, a perfect inverse. On the uh, TLT, you can see where the middle, so we're dropping, same thing, in a very tight little range here. We came off of the 240 on the TLT. We came back to the bottom of the range. Now we're starting to move back up again. And you can see here, uh, now this is what we have. We have the gap that's kind of in between that range that's coming in at the 166.36 to 166.78. And then outside of the range a little bit, that's going to take us to the next supply level coming in at the 168.73 to 169.14. Uh, okay. All right. So always good to look at those couple of markets just to give you a... a you know, it just um, a different look uh, than the uh, equities, but it all ties in together. So it's always good to to look at those things. You know, in the big be in the beginning, like I said, a lot of times uh, everyone, you know, including myself, you just focus on the high flying stocks, right? That's all you care about because that's the one that's moving. That's the one that you want to trade, and that's all that matters at the moment. And then when you get into futures, you say, well, there's a little bit more to it. You know, we we uh, have uh, markets around the world. We have uh, we have different things going on at different times of the world. Then you get into forex, and you're like, well, you know, these currencies, they're you know, they have to do with um, uh, how how the dollar moves, and then how the dollar moves is going to affect us, and how it affects our commodities, and so everything is related to each other. So the um, you know, the more you can learn about things, just um, 
just makes you an overall well-rounded, um, you know, trader, individual investor, you know, anything you want to use it for. All right. So let's uh, move on. Let's uh, talk about the dollar a little bit and then we'll come back to the other markets. So for the dollar, um, has continued inside of this big 60 minute range, right? You can see it. We're coming right back down to test the bottom of it again. Uh, yesterday and the day before, I did mention that there was a gap down below that we could get a bounce from. So you can see that gap area uh, that we had, uh, you know, also listed in brown because it's in between. Uh, from that, we um, did bounce from there. Uh, however, we were coming off of a newly done um, four hour zone. So after that move down, we did have a new four hour zone. So you can see we're still reacting off of it. So down lower now next week, we don't have until uh, these are a little bit lower on the uh, demands. So that can be suggesting that some of these currencies can move a little bit higher. Okay. All right, let's uh, move on to some of the commodities. I will take a look at uh, crude. All right, so for crude, this is the uh, bit of a scenario that we have at the current moment. So we did come up and hit a retested zone that I had up there, but still very holding. You, you can just see this market. You know, we've, we've held pretty much every single demand uh, on the move up and we're continuing to still hold it too as well. So like I said, the, well, let's start with the, what you do have up above all of this, right? You can just see in where it's getting up to. It's nothing significant. We do have some overnight levels in there, but nothing too significant. And really that open space up above, up to the gap, that's really uh, where your um, next uh, areas are that are, are of significance. Uh, right now we are the overnight areas and the, uh, which, um, so you can see this first area, the retested one we hit yesterday, it took a, little, a couple of little bounces up on top again. Um, and you can see the time period. This is a, it is a pretty slow time of night for crude oil. However, it does somewhat coincide with the Asia and uh, European session. So what happens is, you know, it, you, Crude oil gets, it's used all around the world, right? So it's still being traded in there. It's just that it's just lighter volume than actually uh, something such as the pit session that, that we have. So, so that air, those zones are overnight inside of the uh, European markets. Um, in terms of uh, the demand side, uh, where did I? I didn't put on, but you can see right down below this. Uh, right down below this low here, um, we do have a kind of an end of the day. Area on, on the 15 minute at 33.22 to 3304. And then, of course, our uh, larger areas, you can see it is down at the 240 zone, which kind of coincides with these 30-minute zones. Okay. Oh, this is 60. I'm sorry, 30. Yeah, those 240 kind of coincide with these 30-minute uh, zones. All right, let's take a look at uh, net gas. So net gas had uh, two 240 zones. The first one you can see came up and hit it. 
and uh, did drop down. Now we've bounced up a little bit higher. Not quite up at the next 240, which is coming in at uh, 1899 to 1931. It rallied back up to an old level that we did have previously uh, from this area. That, that actually should have been gray. I didn't get to change it yet. So you can see that um, it came back and hit it again. And uh, we have started to fall back from there. So now you can see anything I believe in between now is going to be one of those uh, inside of a, you know, bigger picture uh, range again, because it is coming off of this demand and in between uh, the uh, previous supply that it eventually took out. So the smaller time frame levels just uh, just think of that, and also there is um, usually reports uh, on. Uh, so you can see right here on the uh, you can see right here that we have the um, uh, the uh, the areas up above current price on the five minute. First one is coming in at 1793 to 1800, and then the second one is coming in at 1826 to uh, 1834. All right. Uh, okay, let's go to GC. With that gas, I kind of wait for uh, demand just because it's been a market that's so, there were some on the move up, but we've tested most of them. So it, it's been a market that's been, you know, it, it, it can be a very thin and volatile market. And if there's not a fresh uh, demand, I'd rather wait for a, uh, a demand to be uh, created. Uh, all right. So let's take a look at GC. So GC, in the bigger picture, we have uh, the daily that we have hit, uh, but we do have two dailies on top of each other, right? So if you remember that. All right, so this is the big daily that it's hit, and we had another daily just right up on top of it. So the fresh area is definitely going to be coming up a little bit higher into the 1833 to 1850. The uh, fresh demand side is going to be coming in at 1647 to 1635. On the uh, closer end, what we have is... So uh, you could see here where uh, we were in between the two uh, supply zones, uh, didn't quite make it up to the second area. So I would still keep this one in place. It is uh, one of those middle of the area areas, but that is fine. 1758 to 90 to 1762 These two, um, after prices couldn't get back up there, started to roll around. So a little bit lower odds, uh, just because it is in, um, uh, you know, in inside of this area on the overnight. Uh, but this it is two levels on top of each other on the overnight supply side at the 1745.20 uh, to the 1747.30 up to the 1747.90 to the 1749.80. Down below. So this is what we have down below. We are coming from a zone on the 15 minute that you can see we just barely touched. Um, it looks like it can be uh, fine again. 
right above you do have an overnight zone so that lower zone that was touched one time is coming in at 1692.60, 1690.70. This area on the 15, you can see it is a, um, you know, after we started to uh, break out, uh, we created a little bit of a base, started to move out, couldn't quite get back to there, then started to continue to move out. And so that's the little bit of a higher zone uh, than that previously tested uh, area. All right, let's go and take a look at the, let's see what's going on. So did I do, I thought I did copper, but I'm not sure. I might or might not have. Mm. Yeah, copper. So copper is... I didn't mark down what it is. Um, copper, what you'll see is that nothing too significant. I mean, when I was taking a look at what kind of supply it had up above, the only thing I really saw was actually a retested zone. And the only reason why I marked it out uh, was because we are we are traveling pretty significantly above and this area just barely did touch. So it'll be one of those levels I can I watch as it comes into the zone 2530, uh, And you can see down below on the 60 minute you have two overnight levels on top of each other. That's coming in at 2380 down to 23.58. Uh, Currently, it is, you can see on the five minute, uh, you know, struggled a little bit through this whole area, and that's kind of where we're right back to. So it's a little bit too late now because we already uh, touched it again. So you can see we already we touched it once and we touched it twice. So I think it's a little bit too late now because it's already touched it a few times. Uh, but that's, you can see, we are just slowing just slightly. And, you know, copper along with the Aussie dollar, um, they have a little bit more to do with the stock market than the other, you know, Asia, the stock market, uh, particularly Aussie and the um, uh, Aussie and the uh, and copper, uh, more so to do with China than the other. So they can be ones that you can also watch along with the Nikkei. Uh, and, and two, you know, we had the, we had the unemployment claims. One, one thing I want to say about that weekly unemployment claim is it, it's something that, that I believe is lagging right now, just because I do believe that a lot of people, when they file for unemployment, either didn't get through right away or, uh, they are, you know, had to wait for, for everybody to catch up on the systems and all. So, you know, you could be running three or four weeks late. So I do feel like the actual unemployment claims, even though they keep rising each week, I don't think it really represents uh, exactly what's going on during the week, just because I, I believe that, you know, it, like, say, for instance, we're, we're in four, four different stages right now of opening up the economy. So, you know, stage, stage one, people get to go out now, you know, they get to go back, then stage two. And then of course, the last one, you know, restaurants and stuff is, is towards the end. But uh, I'm, I'm thinking that these people, even though they're going back right now, um, so the stage one, stage two, say, for instance, they go out, but they perhaps were trying to collect unemployment for the past three or four weeks, but they couldn't. And now they start collecting it. And so they're already starting to work, but yet the unemployment claims is still going to show that. Um, so I do believe that number is going to be a little bit of a lagger uh, for, for a couple of weeks at least. So, you know, not... Because it's been usually we don't put a lot of credibility into that number for normal circumstances, but they have the news has been lately just because that's what's going on with this whole pandemic. 
And, um, but I just, I just believe that that's, um, you know, just be, just be aware of that when you're uh, listening to the news. Uh, so for this Aussie dollar, I can't remember, uh, I, w- I think we went over these 30 minute levels, uh, not the last session, but the session before, but uh, very similar to the NASDAQ where it's come up and hit a 30 minute area. So you can see uh, this area here on the uh, AD and the uh, Aussie dollar spot. Uh, we came up and hit it. We have dropped back down. Now these uh, lower zones that has come up and it's hit, same thing with the equities. You can see it it giving a a little bit of a hold. I do believe with today, as we come up and hit these overnight uh, areas, um, depending on how fast the uh, bonds get to supply, that can determine uh, how much of a drop we can get from these, um, you know, you can see, cause anytime we hit the fresh level, then we start to come down, then this would be more of that Brown type of level. And then that would create that second move up. So it's not quite as good as the very first one. And I do believe that's going to depend on a lot on the bond supply too, uh, of how much this can, um, drop from these areas. Uh, on the, uh, demand side, the man side, uh, you can see down below. We've this one; it can still work, but I do believe we're pretty close to that overall area hitting. And if we go to the spot market, we'll see that it actually hit in the spot. Down below, you can see the sixty-four seventy-six to sixty-four sixty-nine. In the Aussie spot, you can see we actually hit. So we hit both of those zones. So we hit the thirty-minute. Supply up above. All right, that we had. So we hit this area. And then we went down from there to hit into the 15-minute demand we had. Right. So, so. That's why I'm being a little bit careful with that lower one on the uh, futures market because I, I do notice that they travel a little bit differently. And uh, sometimes when it start, if it starts to come down and takes this out, then the futures market uh, won't hold that area as well. So that lower level, though, is coming in now at the 64, 74, uh, 64, uh, uh, 67. And then, of course, your 240 is still higher. Uh, one retested zone and uh, and then the uh, two fresher zones up on top on the Aussie dollar. Okay. And I said I would take a look at CD. So let's go take a look at CD. So CD is very much uh, inside of a range. Has come down to hit our, actually this should be a gray type. Okay. Oh, wrong thing. Okay. Well, anyway, I'll fix it. So anyway, this, um, this, you can see we've hit, we've hit down in our 240 zone quite a few times already. And, but we've continued to rally out and we've also came back and hit our 60 minute a few times too, as well. So you can see now it's, um, in terms of what we have close to current price is not that great because of, because of the range that it continues to travel in. Above current price, you can see the next area is coming in on supply side 73.14 to 73.45. And this area you can see will be a brown area of demand because of the range that it's been in for quite some time. And that, that zone's coming in at 71.39, uh, 71.30. You know, for those of you that are fairly new, could be listening for, or you could be listening for a while or, or, or not. But, um, you know, I have to tell you myself too. Uh, I know when I, when I started and I started taking, you know, listening to DVDs, taking classes and all, and, uh, you know, be, people would be talking. I, I didn't know what anybody was talking about. Um, thought I did after a while. I knew what people were talking about. Then, 
so in the beginning you get very confused in terms of you you don't even know if the person presenting knows what they're talking about so you believe that they know what they're talking about but you don't really know that if they know what they're talking about but then after a while and you start to learn slowly and you learn more and more and more you know you practice and you learn at the same time that's always the best and as you start to do it then you start listening to people again you know you go back and start listening to people again then you're like thinking okay now i understand now i know this person knows what they're talking about and i know this person doesn't know what they're talking about then you start to filter out right then it then the process gets easier because once you start to filter out who doesn't know what they're talking about and who knows what they're talking about now it starts to okay i can kick this stuff out i don't need to listen to this i don't need this part about it uh, you know you start to know which part is garbage and which part is really pertinent to what you need to learn in order to get better so between learning about yourself learning about your own trading and then learning about uh you know who's going to tell you the right things so that will make everything easier as you continue um, on your journey to get better and better. JY, you can see we're inside of this uh, range on the 240. Um, and uh, I've taken a look at dollar yen. Dollar yen's way in the middle, but on the future side, uh, we are all the way back down to uh, the, um, the lower portion of the range. So I'll continue to put uh, the uh, supply zones up above. This one actually should be more, this this one actually definitely should be a, a brown type color because it's definitely way, not only did it fall off of this area, but then now it's falling off of this area. So it, it's definitely, a, it's probably even a really, really dark brown. So this is a 9301 to 93082. The bottom demand, uh, we just barely touched it. It can still work for you again. I would just watch out for new uh, supply uh, that forms. With JY, it's going to be a little bit more inverse to the market. So it can turn around if the market finds uh, any, the equity markets find any sort of weakness. Uh, but remember, JY has to deal with the dollar and deal with uh, the stock market both. So the if you do have a... A uh, weak dollar and a uh, strong stock market that's actually going to pull it in both directions. So you can play it in the small range in that in that scenario. But I, you know, you got to watch out for if you have a weak dollar and a uh, weak stock market. That's where you're going to get that good volatility um, and and buy the yen back. Uh, let's take a little quick look at the euro. All right, so the euro, uh, you can see it has been moving up, right, with the dollar moving down. Um, been holding on to every uh, one of these uh, little bit of a air um, demand so far. Uh, this one looks like a little bit too late for a day trade. It already came for a short move up back to supply and back down again. So I was just looking at that for a very small little uh, type of day trade, but the lower, the uh, the man now you can see is still going to be on the 15 minute. Uh, and remember too, these are all inside of that um, bigger range inside of the dollar, the 108.90 uh, to the 108.40, uh, 108.90, 108.77 to the 108.46, uh, 108.35. And given the dollar is in the range, you know, if there's new supply that forms, you know, I, I would um, be fine on taking that too, because it has not shown me that the dollar is ready to take out the range just yet. So if new supply forms, um, look, I will look at that as well. And same thing for the, uh, the numbers on that. I believe you guys have it the other day, but we will go through it again. I remember these are, uh, these are actually brown colors. I just didn't change them yet. Okay, and that's coming in at 108.84, uh, 108.73 to 108.42, 108.29. All right, and again, same thing. If I see some new supplies uh, form inside this market, I will be willing to take that too as well, uh, given where we are with the dollar. 
Uh, all right. So uh, great having you all here today. And uh, we will cover a little bit more tomorrow about uh, the other things that we said we will. And so we will see you tomorrow.